Hey everybody, I'm back. It's been a while, I know. And the reason is because I've been working on other projects trying to expand on my rather, I don't want to say expansive, but somewhat, uh, well, maybe masterful would be nice, acumen of other programming languages and making websites and everything like that from scratch. And just to show you, because I saw recently that John Elder from Codemy.com, who's somebody that I had watched before, was starting to put up a Twitter clone with Python Django. So I just want to show you what I've been working on. And at this point, I think it's time to just sort of hang back and not really think about this for a while. I mean, we'll go back to it sooner or later. And let me just think. It was... Um, source, uh, well, I forgot how to put this together, the virtual environment. But anyway, I, I was making a, a Facebook, well, actually, before I close this out, let me go like this. Let me show you what else I was doing. I was making a Twitter clone with Python Django for a while, and I also was doing this. And, and now this one I didn't really get that deep into, but pretty much I was making Facebook and Twitter with Ruby on Rails and Python. So I just wanted to kind of show you now, this is going to probably take a while to get booted up, but I really didn't get that far with the Ruby on Rails one since their methods are a little bit different than what I'm used to. It's uh, it's something that, like I said, maybe somewhere down the road we'll do. But for now, we're going to just kind of sit tight on what we do and not really use fra frameworks anymore for now, but kind of slowly learn how to make websites from scratch and then get into the idea of making our own framework from scratch, pretty much. Like, more or less build on the building blocks that we started off on and everything like that. But, okay, so this is what we were doing. This is what I was doing. It was just a login, a create account. You know, that's basically all we had. But that was pretty much what I've been doing all this time. And I would like to show you the Django one, but I forgot how to get my virtual server going. It was source... Anyway. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can get, I can get this, I can get this, hold on. All right. I mean, this is not important at all. I just wanted to show off for it. So it's source. Um, what did I call it? Did I call it? No. Did I call it that? Yeah, okay. So then we go to CD. Flacker. Okay, and now we go Python, manage, live on server. Now this is what I was really working on, and I thought I was pretty much done with it, but there were some things that were kind of screwy. But I just wanted to show this to you because I wanted to let you know that though John Elder was is probably doing a decent job, he wasn't doing the job I had been doing, which was, of course, our version of Twitter with this, with Django. And we can make an account. I'm not going to make an account. I'm going to log in with my master account and just give you a little bit of an idea. And here we had it. And we can go to our stories, our news, blah, blah, blah. Go to our home. Notifications I was not done with yet. Messages I was kind of doing something with, but it wasn't really working out. Profile we had, but I wanted to edit profile, but that wasn't working out. And doing even this was a pain in the ass. But, yeah, as you can see, and who to follow and everything like that. So you go to who follow, you can follow, and then you can they're followed, and then you can unfollow, and that wasn't working, you know. So that is completely and utterly not anything important to you right now. What we're doing right now, and we've been doing stuff for people that have some semblance of experience in web development or whatever, more or less just projects for us to kind of play around with with PHP frameworks. What we're going to do 
is this is what I've been wanting to do originally. I want to give, give you tutorials. I want to start from the beginning. For those of you that are beginners who have never made a website from scratch before, want to be, want to, like all stories, have a beginning, middle, and end. You want to start from the very source and move on from there. So before we get into actual coding and the differentiation between coding and programming, let me just explain exactly what a website is. A website is, if I may use it in as basic terms as I can, a website more or less is a presentation of tags. It's made in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on the what's called front end. The front end is just whatever you see in front of you and whatever you can interact with. That's the front end. The PHP stuff, the Django, all that stuff, the Python, Ruby on Rails, that's what's called the back end. That's what's happening behind the scenes. You don't see it. You can't do it. It's just there and it makes everything dynamic. But no matter what your site or web application or web app that you're on or even on your cell phone, whatever it is that you use that requires some connection to an internet and something you can interact with, it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript. That's what you're using. That's every website. There are no differentiations to that. Some sites are made in Java on the back end. Some sites are made in Python, some Ruby, some PHP. Most are PHP still to this day. But when you are actually using a site, it is what you see there is HTML, CSS, JavaScript. HTML is everything in the internet. All the other stuff is rendering HTML. So when you go to a website, let's take my website for instance. So I go to rocketsite.com. When you go to a website, what you're seeing here is you are seeing specific tags and styling and you're interacting with certain JavaScript to get to whatever it is that you're getting to and functioning in whatever you want to function. Doesn't matter how this looks, doesn't matter how it scrolls, whatever. This site is HTML, CSS, JavaScript. When you go to this, this URL is more or less a server, which is basically like pretty much like your own computer. It goes through certain files, it goes through certain documentation, and then it presents those files in whatever manner the file is being read as. So if I go to like my name here, and downloads and stuff, what the computer is actually doing is the computer is actually looking at a file in this file, Carmen Stefano, a file, a folder called downloads, and in that folder called downloads are all these files that it could then render. When you go to a website, you're going to their specific server which acts as that main computer hub where it reads files in a certain way. And what you're doing is you're sending a request. You're saying to the server, hey server, can I see this? The server will then take whatever the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or just HTML and CSS, or even just HTML, whatever those tags and everything tell it to do or tell it how to look, it renders that and it sends back this, which is called a request, so or a response. So we send the request to render this response. This is our request to render this response. So on a server, there is a file of https slash slash rocketsite.com, and then due to something we're going to get into, you can stop it from just reading it literally and giving it another naming facility so that it can go from HTTPS file, rocketsite.com file, slash, whatever, dot, whatever, to just pricing or what have you. Is even when you go to YouTube, if you go to youtube.com, you're sending the request, yo, can I go to YouTube and see what's on YouTube? And YouTube's file on the server is going to render this response. So request, response, that's very important. Don't forget that. Request, sent, render, response, the three R's. Request, render, response. That'll be important in the future. Now, with HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, what it is, it's basically a series of tags. And I gotta stop saying basically. 
but it's a series of tags. Now you can put this in anything. You can put this in Notepad. And just to show you, we're, we're going to use Visual Studio Code, don't worry. But just to show you, I'm gonna just open up Notepad. Let's, do I have Notepad? I don't have Notepad. How'd that happen? Hold on, I have Notepad. Notepad, there we go. I have Notepad. We can open up Notepad and we can go to new. We can just make a new file. We can call it, uh, we'll just put in something. We'll put in, uh, how you doing, Sonny Boy? We could just put that in there. And if we save it as, let me see. I have a folder for this. Where did I put it? Where are you? Come out here. Come out here, you bastard. It was an OS, wasn't it? Yeah. If I put it in HTML, all right, and I call it, let's do an, let's call it, I see I have a practice, let's call it Haya.html. I have Haya.html. If I go to the internet and I type in, see, you see how I have this already? And I go, Haya.html, we're going to have a response. We sent to my file, HTML slash Haya.html, we sent to this file, that, and that's what we have. Now, you're going to say, now wait a minute, book man, you've got to be out of your stinking mind. How do we turn this into something like this? Well, again, this JavaScript, CSS, HTML. All this is HTML. What I just typed in here, what I do with this and everything, that's JavaScript, and all the styling is CSS. We're not going to get into that today. Today, we're going to slowly get to that point for all you beginners when I show you how to turn something like that into input fields, into paragraphs, into asides, into divs, into headers, footers. We'll slowly get into that, but I just want you to understand exactly what we're doing here and what you see on the internet is actually this. It's just files, it's just text, it's just all this markup language, and I'm gonna get into so much with you guys. I'm very excited, I hope you are too. So I'll be back in just a second and we're gonna do even more. We're gonna do a lot more than what we just did here, okay? So I'll be right back.